Tonight, inside the world of extreme dog breeders. If you look at all my dogs, they all look slightly different. Well, They've they got do, different but characteristics. So but why breed they, them this way? This then? is what people like and really? desire. Bulldogs of all shapes and sizes are loved by celebrities and the public alike. Now unscrupulous dealers are cashing in. This is a business that's purely driven by profit, not taking into account the welfare of the dogs. We go undercover to expose animal cruelty. Well, his ears are just reeling. How long will it take for that ear to reel? Who thinks? I know. Let's breed a dog whose legs are around the wrong way. Who does that? We reveal the links to organised crime. The big breeders, the majority of them, are criminals, drug dealers, organised crime guns, who are driving the market. And the devastating impact of the trade in extreme dogs. Every time I shut my eyes. I try and tell myself that's not the last image that I've got of him. Right, I think it's in here. Yep, there we are. Oh, rescue. Hello, hi. I'm Sam from the BBC. I'm here for Vanessa. This rescue centre in Wales is at the sharp end of the dog trade, caring for abused and abandoned dogs. Dogs like Keanu, an American bully. Oh my goodness. One of the new extreme mixed breed bulldogs becoming more and more popular. It's as though his legs are on back to front. Who thinks, I know, let's breed a dog whose legs are around the wrong way. Who does that? There is no surg surgical options for him. The vets have said there's nothing we can do about that. How old is he? He's eight months old. He's only eight months. But just look how big he is. Look how thick set he is. This is torture. Now, you know what these dogs are going to look like, but you're still breeding them, trying to get more and more exaggerated features. I mean, it looks painful when he's bent over like that. Oh. We're seeing this every single week. This is day-to-day -day life for us here at the rescue now. Then there's Alvin, also an American bully. Like Keanu, he's a victim of extreme breeding, where dogs are deliberately bred to create exaggerated characteristics. He actually came in as a stray. Highly likely he was deliberately abandoned, though, due to his health issues. Alvin's ears have been cropped, and he's got skin missing from his front paws. So he's scuffed and bleeding because he just is unable to have that strength. He can't hold the, the, the he can't hold sheer his weight of these dogs, the, the muscle tone. Oh, look at that. You I know. poor thing. Oh, so you can, can see just, his leg. Yeah. His leg just totally t twists around. And again, bad, bad breeding. It's the only reason for it. In the last 12 months, 10 dogs have been in such poor condition due to extreme breeding that Hope Rescue have had to put them to sleep. Good boy. The breeders don't care. They're not the ones that are seeing the heartache. These dogs aren't going to see past their second birthdays. Some of them, including my own foster dog, was put to sleep at six months old. Now, I didn't get into rescue to have to euthanise six-month-old puppies. That's not why I got into animal welfare. I can't tell you how heart I can't tell you how heartbreaking that is for us. Gosh, it's more than that. Bulldog breeds have become some of the most sought after in the UK. Whether it's the petite French Bulldog with 54,000 new puppies registered in 2021. The flat-faced English Bulldog with more than 15,000 registered. Or the bigger American Bully, a modern crossbreed. And now, unscrupulous dealers are cashing in. This is Carl and Victoria Shellard. Their business, Poshable, sold English bulldogs with extreme features. Their dogs advertised on social media for up to £20,000. Two years ago, business was booming for the Shellards. Then they caught the eye of the authorities. 
first of all, we'd check to see whether or not they were registered, which they weren't. But social media and adverts suggested that they were breeding in quite a big way. They were selling to Asia, they were selling to the Far East, they were selling to America. They were selling all over. When investigators raided Poshables, they found a huge operation. Kennel after kennel in the back garden. Boxes in the kitchen for the dogs to give birth in. Even a fertility clinic. It's a, a laboratory, a purpose-built laboratory with a centrifuge, uh, with uh, units to enable him to do the, the stud work and the artificial insemination. Just a walk away from the house to do your business with the dog, probably on a, you know, a milking stool and then uh, back down for, for tea. There were 27 dogs on site. The Shellards were also creating their own signature English bulldog with extreme features. The type of dog that they were developing had big rope necks and rolls of fur and looked a really cuddly type of dog. But these dogs were desperately unhealthy. They had respiratory problems and in a number of cases weren't fit to be bred from. The Shellards were convicted of animal welfare offences in 2022. They were fined £19,000 each. A proceeds of crime order was issued to recoup almost £400,000 of illegal profit. Despite the conviction, I've discovered the Shellards are still in business. They're no longer selling dogs, but they're still in the extreme breeding game. I want to find out what's going on. Posing as a potential customer, I make an appointment with Carl Shellard. Hello. Hi, I'm so sorry. I lost my voice a couple of days ago. He takes me through to see the dogs. Uh, Bench Press is, is, is the most famous. Mr. Mustard is the newest, most famous, like, on the scene at the moment. But they're both as busy. He just done a stud this morning. We're worldwide, so we've we've had, um, you know, litters off of our stud dogs practically every country in the world. If you look at all my dogs, they all look slightly different. Well, and they, they got do, different but, characteristics. But they're so distinctive. Yeah. And that's because I think you said on the phone, it's the overdone. Is it overdone? Yeah, yeah overdone they look? like the overdone look. I, I, I personally prefer them a little bit tighter in the body and not as much loose skin, but so why breathe they, them this, way, this is what people like and really? desire. <laughs> and in an outbuilding, I'm amazed to see his dog fertility clinic still up and running. Oh, oh, this is great. Yeah. So this is where I, I do the meetings and the briefings in here. Oh, so I was going to ask you about that. You do this I by do hand? I myself, yeah. Unfortunately, I'm... <laughs> A so, very highly paid dog <laughs> All that private school education and off dogs for a living, that's great. Is Crazy. there money made in this or? There is, because like these set dogs are two and a half, three and a half thousand pounds a start. Remember, the Shellards were prosecuted a year ago, but business looks as good as ever. I think the most I did one month was 41 studs. 41 studs. Yeah, so that's like 90, 100 grand in a month. And there's a lot of scumbags out there that, yeah. that breed dogs. And, you know, yeah. we're having to deal with them on a daily basis. I yeah. think that's the worst part about it. That's See you later. Bye bye. The Shellards are still operating because they're exploiting a loophole in the law. If you run a business selling puppies, you need a license from your council. But if, like the Shellards, you're only breeding from male dogs, then you don't need one at all. We asked Mark Adams-Jones what he thought about the Shellards getting back into the dog breeding game. Unbelievable. Carl Shellard is making an enormous amount of money according to what I've just seen on the footage. He's doing that at the moment within the confines of the regulations. We need to look at things differently we need to look at the way the breeders are looking at it in order to tighten up on the regulations. Carl and Victoria Shellard didn't respond to the allegations in this programme. 
It's those lax regulations and huge profits that are now attracting a different sort of extreme breeder linked to organised crime. An animal welfare investigator who's been looking into the bulldog trade has agreed to speak to me. She's worried about her safety, so we're concealing her identity. It's a massively lucrative trade. A multitude of breeders throughout the UK that are linked. What are you seeing? The more extreme dog that you produce, the more money you get. Who are the main people in this network? The big breeders, the majority of them are criminals, drug dealers, organised crime gangs who are driving the, the market. It's exactly the same business model as selling drugs, but we're talking about dogs. Yes, mate. Yeah, if you can go to the left-hand side, it'll show you where to park. Top This is the UK American Bully Kennel Club show. It has no connection to the official UK Kennel Club. I've been tipped off that this event is full of extreme breeding and cruel practices. I'm undercover with a colleague to gather evidence. Just to that? Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Inside the main arena, I watch the competition. All of the dogs have incredibly muscular frames. I also notice that most have their ears cropped, a practice banned 17 years ago. But here, American bullies with cropped ears win many of the main prizes. It's a real concern to, to the RSPCA and to us um, to see dogs that have been mutilated, deliberately mutilated. It's totally against the law, it's totally legal in the UK. And ultimately there is no excuse. The only reason an animal's ears have been cut off is, is for aesthetics. It's because people want them to look that way. In the last three years, more than a thousand incidents of illegal ear cropping have been reported to the RSPCA in England and Wales. Most cases, involve bully breeds. Because it is illegal in this country, it is then going to this underground network of people to perform that surgery. It really is a worrying trend and really quite concerning. And, and from an animal welfare perspective, is absolutely appalling. Back at the dog show, I check out the stalls. I recognise a number of faces here. Some of them have criminal records. You're in the market, Pop Pocket. Nathan Stevens was jailed for attacking a man with a glass and leaving him partially blinded. Anton Boston is a convicted fraudster and runs a dog breeding business in Wales. And this man has three convictions for violence. We can't name him because he's currently in court facing more charges. We wrote to the American Bully Kennel Club UK. They did not respond. I want to dig deeper into the world of extreme bulldog breeding. It seems like most sales take place on social media. I set up a Facebook profile under a false name, Stefan Delaney. I make him out to be a dog lover and a businessman from Leeds. I start to build his network. As Stefan, I comment on people's dog posts, offer advice and generally become a friend to all. One name catches my eye, Aaron Lee. He was an apprentice judge at the dog show. He runs a dog breeding business called Balaclava Bullies. As a judge, you'd think he has high dog welfare standards. But here he appears to be training a dog to attack a man inside what looks like a police van. Aaron Lee promotes the extreme characteristics of his puppies again and again on social media. A little puppy update for everyone. My little mouse. Look how strong they are. Look at that muscle. <laughs> I make an appointment to see him. Hello, I'm, I'm the Baron. Bomber. Hi, Bomber. Aaron Lee is also exploiting the loophole in licensing regulations by just breeding from his male dogs. 
He tells me he's focused on maximising their extreme features. I just use selected dogs, certain dogs, to lock in certain traits, the bone, the movement, the muscle, everything. I bred him a couple of times this week, so he's coming back smelly like bitches. And then what would you, for studying, I mean, what do you charge? Three grand next year, I'll, I'll bump him up to five, you see, because he's had a solid year of breeding now. So when, when you see what they're producing, right. then you can tweak with your price. Okay. He takes me inside, and in a back room are two tiny American bully puppies with freshly cropped ears. Oh, how old are they? Just two weeks. Hi. Hi. Oh, his ears are just healing. How long will it take for that ear to heal? Not long. What a week. Hello. Oh. You're keeping these? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Right, okay. Nice okay, to meet you. Thanks. See you later. Bye take bye care. Bye-bye. Aaron Lee seems to be doing pretty well from his breeding business. I show the footage of the dogs with the freshly cropped ears to the RSPCA. So they're 10 weeks old? Yeah, it's, I mean, clearly the fact that you can see they've been caught 10 weeks old, um, that it's clearly an offence and clearly um, these dogs have been cropped uh, in this country. What would the punishment be for that? So up to five years potentially for causing suffering to an animal and or a lifetime ban um, and fines, uh, you know, significant fines. Aaron Lee didn't respond to the allegations in this programme. He leads me to the next connection. On Facebook, he regularly tags this man, Thomas Raymond. That doesn't make sense to me, because Raymond's in prison. He was jailed for six years in 2021 for running a County Lines drugs gang. By this time, my fake bulldog-loving profile, Stefan, is getting popular, and he gets a message. It's from Thomas Raymond. I reply as Stefan. I think there's probably two possibilities here. Either someone else is running Thomas Raymond's account on Facebook, or Raymond is messaging me himself from prison. From the Raymond account, I'm sent pictures of two dogs that have produced a litter. The puppies are being offered for sale through a company called Musseltone Bullies UK. And Musseltone is massive. Imagine one big international kennel, but with franchises all over the world. Musseltone is one of the most well-known breeding lines in the bully trade. Now, if you look here at the UK arm of the business, that's Thomas Raymond on the left. Now, he seems to own the franchise here in the UK for Musseltone. And then that man on the right, the one with the really distinctive face tattoo, that's a man called Ryan Howard. Now, if you look in the breeding section, if I go to the breeding section, the two main points of contact are Ryan Howard and Thomas Raymond. Musseltone Bullies UK claims to sell its dogs for huge sums, with pups not even born yet, apparently selling for tens of thousands, others up to a quarter of a million. I message Raymond back. Again, a Stefan. The Thomas Raymond account goes quiet for a while, and I wonder whether the deal's gone cold. Then suddenly... Right, so this is Bridge Street. That, and that is not the house of a dog seller. That's a fertility clinic. The meeting's been arranged for four o'clock. I'm supposed to be meeting Thomas Raymond. They're expecting businessman. Hello. Stefan Delaney. You right? Hiya. Come and look at some dogs. Yeah. We were arranged to come at four o'clock. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just get the keys. It's Ryan Howard, Thomas Raymond's business partner. I tell him that I'm Stefan's girlfriend and that Stefan's running late. Hey, so how about it? 
I try to get to the bottom of who's been messaging me. I don't know who Steph's been talking to. According to his business partner, convicted drug dealer Thomas Raymond is running a very lucrative breeding business from prison, with the best of the litter going for more than £10,000. If we wanted first pick, how much are we talking? Yeah, well, that one's talking. Male. If you was wanting that male, I'm not saying. Not no price. I don't need money. I've got loads of money. <laughs> Ryan Howard is not licensed to breed and sell dogs. But he says he's got a huge network. You've probably got what? Uh, How do you keep 120 dogs? I only keep about 15 of me. The other dogs are looked after through a network of what's called co-owns, where the dealer gets someone else to house the dog while profiting from any sales. It means that breeders can sell dozens and dozens of puppies without looking after them and without the authorities having any idea. I tell Ryan Howard that Stefan's looking to invest. Co-owning this with me would mean that basically, even if you took the dog, we just look after it. I'll put it for stud and I'll sell it for studs. And then do I get a cut? Do we get a cut? <laughs> okay, see you later. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you. Bye. Ryan Howard told Panorama that Muscletone Bullies UK are well known for breeding the highest quality extreme American bullies without compromising the dog's health or well-being. He said our local councils will not register us as breeders as we don't have litters on our premises. He said they'd never co-owned a dog as a deliberate ploy to escape the scrutiny of the licensing authorities and added that Thomas Raymond does not communicate with anyone illegally and has others running his socials. Animal welfare investigators are seeing a growing trend in the practice of co-owning dogs. They say it can lead to mistreatment of the animals and that can be dangerous. These breeders are passing these dogs from pillar to post one day they could be at a property with 10 kids. The next day they could be at a property left for days alone. These can be dangerous dogs. Although American bullies are not banned, historically they've been crossbred with pit bulls and they've been banned in the UK since 1991. A woman from Wrexham whose partner's dad died after being bitten by one of their dogs says she feels like she's living in a nightmare. 2022 was the deadliest ever for fatal dog attacks in the UK. Merseyside police say the death of a 17-month-old girl after being attacked by a pet dog has left her family and the local community in shock. Ten people were killed, four of them children, last year. American bullies were responsible for six deaths. Philly 2021. This is Beast, an American XL bully, the largest type of this breed. Beast weighs more than eight stone by the time he's 15 months old. The man holding the dog can't control it. It jumps up at one child, biting her on the arm. 
the man repeatedly punches the dog. At one point, it fixates on a young girl. She moves away behind a parked van. When it snaps at the child, the man punches the dog again. Four days later, just around the corner, 10-year-old Jack Liss leaves home with his skateboard. Emma. Hiya. Sam. How are you? Hey, nice to meet you. How are you doing? Can I come in? Yeah, sure. Oh, you've got photos everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> They've become more important now, these photos. Yeah, you don't realise that. <laughs> no. One of his favourite films was Back to the Future. OK. So he put that together and that was on his shelf in his bedroom. They all have a proper place. Yeah. <laughs> Way. He said, can I go out to play? And he wanted to take his skateboard with him. And the last thing that he said to him was, be careful. Jack had met his friend straight after leaving the house. And his friend said, um, do you want to come and see my new dog? And within maybe 10, 15 minutes of that, my door knocked. There was a lady saying, you're Jack's mum. I said, yeah. She said, he's been attacked by a dog. I just jumped in the car. I pulled up outside the house. You could hear the dog barking. The dog tried running through the door. And that's how I seen the dog's face. The dog had only attacked one part of him, and it was here up. His face. Oh, okay. And his neck. They kept saying they're working on him, they're working on him. And then The paramed walked away and came back with a blanket. And I knew, I can't say out loud what else I saw because I don't want other people to have to picture it either. I... Brandon Hayden, who co-owned the dog, was jailed for four and a half years after admitting owning or being in charge of a dangerously out of control dog. His friend Amy Salter was jailed for three years. The pair were banned from ever owning a dog again. Every time I shut my eyes, and I try and tell myself that's not the last image that I've got of him. I try and tell myself it was when he shut the door with his skateboard in his hands. But that's not true. The dog that killed Jack underlines many of the problems with the trade in bulldogs with extreme characteristics. Brandon Hayden wasn't a licensed breeder. He co-owned the dog and he got hold of it through an advert on social media. And look at this, just two months after Jack is killed, here's Brandon Hayden advertising for sale a litter of American bully puppies on Instagram. After months undercover investigating the bulldog trade, one thing is clear to me. As long as the regulations governing dog breeding remain lax, then unscrupulous breeders and criminals are going to carry on cashing in. And that means both people and dogs are going to suffer. <laughs>